and expect them to be three feet away. Right. Hell, I went to school in Mississippi and I, I can do the math on that one. Right. Uh, but a lot of folks, <clears throat> they do this when they're thinking about work and then the moment they leave the round pen of the arena, they're back to letting that horse be all over them. Right. Like from over there, I mean, it's not easy with that, that flat halter, but from over there, it, it should already be, hey, get out of my space. Oh yeah, no, uh, he's definitely in three-play bubble. All right, so walk off. And whenever you're ready, you're gonna plant a foot, spin around and look at him and go. Nice, that's what we wanna see. This is automatically safer than what's happening over there. Yeah, okay. And the other thing is you're already establishing that, number one, you need to have his respect and his undivided attention. And number two, that you're leading, you're dictating. Mm -hmm. When they're kind of leading you and they're like all over top of you and you're smacking on their chest and, and neck to get them off of you, you're already telling them, hey, you know what I say, it really doesn't matter that much. Right. I could tell you a bunch of times. It's better, it's more humane to tell them one time and then show them, hey, uh, back them up once or twice, than to constantly be nagging on them because that nagging on the ground will directly affect how, how they ride. And then you start nagging, on, slow down, slow down. Well, the same way that they run into you on the ground after all that nagging, they'll run away with you under saddle um, after all that nagging. So, basically we're establishing your role here. Nice, hey, that horse I got a little stop on him. Before you approach, I already be backing him. Don't pop your own bubble. There you go, crazier, crazier, ah, ah. Good job, and release, and do it again. Ask him to back, all right? Wait for him to back and release. So, that's another thing that's hard for people too, is to escalate their energy but then release on a moment's notice. Right. Usually by the time that they get active, they get emotional, they get emotional blah, blah. yeah, yeah, I am a chihuahua. And, and, then, and then they can't stop, stop barking when the bad guy goes away. Nice. Now, exactly, way to make that change from being ferocious to being relaxed, exactly. As soft as you can, as hard as you have to. And if you keep it that simple, all of your horses are gonna get softer and easier. I just got a big old butt. <laughs> Looks like one of those rap stars' girlfriends or something. There we go. There we go. Get it, get it. Back him some more. There you go. You got him on the ropes now. Release and ask him again. Back him up again. There we go. And again. See how quietly you can ask him. There we go. All right. See how quietly you can ask him. Nice, again. Nice, good, good, all right. Coils in one hand, popper in the other hand, and you're gonna ask him to lunge a circle around you. All right, there you go, put your, exactly. Because if you have a big water rope, stop. You're, he's already lunging you. Go, go right back in front of him. The, the alpha mare which you are only goes in one direction. Okay. If you move your feet, you're coming in a straight line. So we're gonna put our coils right here. Notice there's no sideways stepping. I'm gonna point him off, and this starts coming towards his shoulder, and then once he's past me, that hand is coming towards my belly button. If he gets too close to me, I put a hand in his face. If he needs some forward, pop him on the butt. Does that make sense, that those B lines, those straight track lines? The second you start walking around him, again, you kind of lose the, you could come up on the butt of an undomesticated Mustang and it would move forward. So that doesn't tell you how broke he is, how respectful he is, how much, how much his steering wheel works. But you stand directly in front of him and sending him off and taking that step. See how he's already stepping away? That's what you want to see. And then he has the tendency of keeping his head straight and coming in your bubble yes. if he does that. So why are you holding it like that? You can direct him, and if you were in the saddle, this is how you hold the reins, right? Yeah. So everything that we're doing from the ground is directly mirroring what we're going to do in the saddle. So the smaller the steps, the longer lasting the results. The smaller the steps, the easier it is to climb the mountain. Okay. okay? So point him off to the left, start swinging towards the shoulder, walking into him. Walk, 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 pop, 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 pop. He says, no, mama loves me. Pop, and release. There you go. Now, once he's sideways, you'll pop his butt if, he's, if he doesn't keep going. All right, relax, lower your energy. Relax that left hand by your belly button. There you go, you're looking at his face. See if he's looking at you. If he's not pulling towards you, there you go. See how he looks outward, like you're not important? I'm not important. Pull across your belly button. Pull him across your belly button. There you go, that's it, and keep sending him forward. There we go, now you gotta bend, do it again. Pull him again, pop him again. Pull him again, 
Cross your belly button. Pop him in. There we go. Now stop swinging when he's moving. Pull him again. Every time he looks away, I want you to pull him sharp. Pull. There we go. So why do you pull across your belly button? Because that's going to give you the bend that you need. There we go. Nice. Across your belly button. There we go. There we go. And stop. Pull on his face. Back him up. Back, back, back. Shake that rope. Shake that rope. All right, guys. Whenever you point him out this way and you pull him more this way, that straightens him out more. When you're standing directly in front of them, you say, hey, go that way. The second they turn and they're going that way, now your hand says, hey, look here. Go that way, look here. Go that way, look here. Well, now he's going forward and your hand's here, but he's looking straight. You're going to pull across your body here because you're, you're wanting to get this. You want that C shape. You want to be behind his eye so you're driving him here. That's so much more as if you're riding. Him being 20 feet away from you, looking out over the fence, that does not resemble riding whatsoever. You're about to straddle that horse. You're about to get real up close and personal with that horse. So the closer we can get into that bubble and the more that you can be behind his eye and he can be seeing you and bending here, the more you're preparing. You switch directions and he comes right here and he keeps his eye on you. Any well-trained horse, any good riding horse should simply be able to do this. Go left and keep their eye on you. Go right. If they can't do that, they do not have a steering wheel. You wouldn't drive a snowmobile, a pogo stick, or anything that didn't have handlebars or a steering wheel or anything. You have to be able to steer them. And their head is how you steer them. Oh, oh, no, no, move their feet. No, intertwine your soul with theirs. No, all that cockamamie bullshit. That's, that's very confusing. Control their head. That's the steering wheel. Get their face to go. They're not going anywhere without their head. If you can control their head to where you want it to go and manipulate that, everything else becomes easy. Then you can start worrying about the bond. Then you can start worrying about all these other wonderful things. But you gotta gain control of their head. So when I see them in there, you're lunging them here and you're popping them with the rope and they're not even worried enough about you to look at you. Now maybe you say, hey, we may, may need to make a couple adjustments. May need to make pick up a crop that's a little bit more fiery. Maybe we need to switch where our rope is on their face, but we gotta do something where that horse, you're lunging him and he's looking out at the scenery. Wow, Alaska sure is beautiful. No, come here, look at me. Yeah. That's what we're looking for. We're looking, we call this undivided attention. And this is where you see, is your horse looking for other horses at the flags that here or there? Well, he's definitely gonna do that under saddle. Or can you get this? Yes, yes, oh, yes, man. Okay, I'll do whatever you, switch, okay, switch, okay. I much rather ride a green or unbroke horse that is like that than a finished horse that won't even look my direction. Because their amount of education doesn't matter if you if you can't tap into them. With with first grade, so you guys aren't popping to get feet. You're popping with feet. Okay, I'm going to change this out for you and see if we can get a little bit better results. Okay. All right, so this circle is about to get it's about to get smaller because from a 15 foot lead rope, we're hooking the reins up like we're riding them. And also I'm grabbing a crop. She was real busy and he really didn't care about it. She was popping him on the butt and he wasn't even looking at her. So that lets you know right there that he doesn't care. So we grabbed the crop. Now we're gonna be able to go overhanded swing in the lead rope, you're touching the least sensitive part of the horse by touching their butt. That's the least sensitive, toughest part of their uh, of the horse's body. You know that because the old timers will look out and about and, well, the storm's coming in from the west. You're like, how the hell do you know that? Uh, you need to go to school. You can't be a meteorologist. No, it's not that complicated. The horses are all pointing in the same direction wherever the storm's coming because that's their storm shield. From their butt to their withers is the least sensitive part of the horse. So when they think any discomfort is coming, they turn their butt towards it. So the crop is gonna allow us to get up under them, which is gonna light them up a little bit more, give us more respect. And now putting the reins on them is gonna give us more control of their face. So I'm gonna ask him to, I'm gonna ask him to move off. Now, 
Now look at the bend in his body. Out of nowhere, you could pop the saddle just to see how he's gonna deal with that sound. Do you see how much more attention he's paying? And not only is he paying more attention, but I'm doing less work, which is important. Notice how my, my crop is parallel to my horse's body. So the handle represents his face and shoulders. The popper represents his butt. So if I'm trying to drive him forward, I want my, my crop to come here towards his flank if it's a short crop. If his face gets too close to me, I bring the, the handle up towards his face. So right there, he tries to step through my bubble. I just locked out my arm and he said, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to try to step through your bubble. Bring this up towards his face. Now we got that shoulder moving the way that we want. Switch sides. Good boy. Put the reins back over his head. Do you see the a difference in how hard I'm working versus the response that I'm getting? That's what we're looking for. Occasionally when he tries to step into you, lock your hand out so that he runs into that pressure there and wants to step away. And that's gonna get him, so every time I send him off here, there we go, I want him bent my way. And if he wants to walk, I'm not, I'm not pressuring him to go faster. Look at his head starting to drop. Now when I click to him, it means something to him. Earlier, we were popping him in the butt with a lead rope and he wasn't moving. Now we're clicking it to him and it makes something. Notice something else. He's come more comfortable with this exercise. You could tell because look at his head dropping. Reach over here. There we go, buddy. Even you, fella. Look how soft he's getting in the face. Look how he steps over so nicely. Now you're only gonna need this crop in one or two days. And he's gonna start respecting you and say, hmm, let me do it before you get that crop. Look how he steps around me there. All right, young lady, you come try. Does that make sense? Your, your crop is gonna, you're gonna hold it like this and it's gonna stay parallel with his body. There you go, here, hold right here. There you go, start bringing that towards him and stepping into his shoulder, bring it towards him. There you go, now he steps around you. Keep that hand between you and him, there you go. So if you feel like you're stuck there, you need to drive him forward more, you need to be behind that shoulder. Be behind that shoulder, bring that crop closer to him. You're trying to lead him, don't lead him. Don't lead him, keep that hand between you and him. Bring the crop towards him. Get that hand behind his face. There we go. That's it. So she was having an issue because she keeps getting out in front of that shoulder because she's trying to lead him through it versus drive him through it. Push him in front of you. All right, so you're trying, to, you're trying to lead him through it. Use your crop and push him forward. You need to be back there by the cinch. There we go. Much better, much better. Now relax, take the pressure off. Reach over, switch hands. And again, quiet. See how you moved your feet? Don't move your feet. He has four of them. You have two of them. He should be moving his. There we go. And if you want him to take a step forward so you can be by the center, you just bring the crop closer to him where he can see it. There we go. Nice, now relax. Stop him there. Switch hands. Do not move your feet. Move his feet. Bring the crop close to him. There we go. There we go. You feel how buttery he is in the face? That is your steering wheel. That's what it's supposed to feel like. Look at his attention. He doesn't look like he's looking outside of the circle now, like he's looking outside of the fence. 
Nice. Use the crop to move him. Use the crop. You're not using your crop. There you go. He wants to pull on your hand. There we go. So you don't get in a tug of war match. If he starts pulling back on you, you start laying chase to him. Like the little chihuahua you are. They move. Nice. And pet him. Tell him how pretty he is. Hey, hey, that's what it is. That's the, that's the magic right there. What do we have to do to gain your respect enough to give us a steering wheel where we're in control? What do we have to do to earn enough respect from you that you'll look at us? You talk to folks and you can tell how invested they are in the conversation just by where are they looking. If I'm talking to you and you're on your phone or I'm talking to you and you're asleep, you're not that invested. What's well, the same way with the horse? When I see that you're trying to grab their attention and they're like, yeah, yeah, uh, I'll be with you in a moment. <laughs> that's not, the horse isn't invested. And if they're not invested with you being on the ground, two feet in the dirt, that's the most balanced you're going to be. That's the strongest you're going to be. The most assertive you're going to be. The most confident you're going to be. You're only giving up ability once you get in the saddle. So if that joker's eyes all over the place, yelling for his friends, stepping on your feet here, you need to make adjustments before you get in that saddle because there is no magic pixie dust that's going to sprinkle out of your keister onto the saddle that's going to fix it when you get in the saddle. Notice yesterday he was kind of acting like that, kind of tension everywhere. What was he under saddle? He was the exact, he didn't lie to us. He told us who he was. So we made the adjustment. We said, oh, you want to be that guy? We'll be this. No, it usually, usually takes me like an hour to get his attention right? on me. So now it's going to take you two minutes, yeah. five minutes. Look at where his head's at. That's where it should be. He should be shorter than you all the time, right? Yeah. You're pint size and he's big, yeah. but guess what? You know where giraffes drink their water from? <laughs> you know where moose drink their water from? It don't matter how big they are. It matters how respectful they are. So you can have a little pony and they'll, they'll stick up like a little banny rooster and try to put their chest on you. You're like, hey, stop that. It's them trying to show dominance. It doesn't matter if it's two horses, two walruses, two bears, two gorillas. Whenever they're trying to, in the animal kingdom, whoever controls territory, whoever moves their feet is the loser. Whoever stands their ground and puffs up and intimidates the other one is the winner. So a lot of times we'll have our horse that's our baby that, that we do everything for. And then you turn around, you're trying to ride them, and they're puffing up on you and putting their chest on you. He can't tell you, I don't respect you. Right. That right there is the face of a respectful horse, right? But we made the adjustments. Yeah. It, it's not even that you worked harder. Yeah. You work less hard to get more, and it's all from those mental adjustments that you made where, okay, we're going to put the reins where you don't want to get touched, and we're going to grab a crop that you don't want to get cropped by. Right. And he made some, some funny faces, like he wanted to kick out, or, or he wanted to bite, or, or rear up, or do something funky, but we didn't care. Because we, we knew we were standing beside him. His shoulder, what's he going to do? If you rear up, I'm going to crop you three more times. If you throw a kick, I'm going to crop you right in the leg one more time. Because I know you can't get me there. And that's the name of the game when you have a, a naughty little pony. It's all about, can I put myself in a position where I'm confident and you're not? I'm in a place where you can't put any mental pressure on me, but I feel mentally pressure you. If you do that, you make big changes. Cinch up, let's ride. Everybody, you guys over here, anybody have any questions? It's hard to be buddy side when we're right here. You can't talk to your friends if you got two eyes, two ears on me. And so much of that is buddy sour is this. They're more worried about their buddies than they're worried about uh, Mawa and grabbing them by the ear and dragging them back into the car. Okay, so you can help me with that. <laughs> so that also, like, with mine, um, to take him, because um, he started the pulling on the, on the trailer. Yes. And then also when I try to take him out, so this kind of training. Absolutely, directly, direct correlation. So say your horse acts so good here in your arena, and then you pull him off, you know, you drive two hours up the mountain to take him on a trail ride, you pull him off the trailer and it doesn't look like the horse that you know. If you have this in place. I'm in a mad setting because I usually don't ride by myself. Yeah. But I want to do trail rides by my house. Gotcha, gotcha. So wherever you are wherever you are. If you have this in your program, you can just grab him by the nose and say, hey, move here, move there. Put a crop on him once or twice and get him soft and easy. Yes, ma'am. And now you're gonna have your, you're gonna have him where he's soft and easy. All right, so I just want you to start in first grade. See me your genie in your pocket. One rein only, out to the side, to your pocket. There we go. Fifth grade. Other side. What happened? Fifth grade. Gotcha. gotcha. Other side. All right. Now, I want you to do the same thing, but instead of stopping here, I want you to look at his butt and pull him around to his butt. There you go, all the way. And when you're doing that, you can feel the pressure on your butt on the cancel. So it's not just the pulling there, but think about your torso twisting. 
Feel your butt cheek on that cam so that you're actually putting pressure. There is a piece of wood strapped to his spine. Use it. People, people say things like, oh, use your body. Dude, that doesn't make a lot of sense to a lot of folks. What do you mean, you, you use my body? There's a piece of wood strapped to your horse and it's attached to his spine. You can manipulate that. So that means if, if I put my, right there, she's putting her left butt cheek on the cantle, well, automatically her right hip, her right thigh is pushing on the pommel. Well, now you're pushing that piece of wood around. He's gonna start getting in the habit of going where you're looking. Nice. All right, release. Now I want you to circle him, don't get him too flexed, and lock your inside hand to your knee. There you go. Now back him up with the other hand. Take your heels off, bump, bump, bump. Nice. Release and go the other way. If he wants to drop his head like that, leave him alone. Like the lower he wants to put his head, that's fine. Right? What do you want me to do? Okay, just give him the reins and ask him to go forward. Now circle around to the left. There you go. Lock that hand into your knee. And then take your heels off and start bumping him backwards with the other hand. Asking him to back up crooked. See how straight he is? There you go. Oh, now he's crooked to the other side. So we're going to keep him bent to whatever side we're circling to. So if we circle left, we're going to have him left and back him up here to the left. Circle left. There you go. Back him up with your right hand. There you go. Nice. Right hand, right hand. Pulsate, pulsate. Right hand needs to pulsate. There you go. Exactly. And let go. Good job. Good job. All right. One more thing before we give you some excitement. I want you to circle him. Give, give a circle around me. And then as he's bent and he's circling, you're going to bring that inside hand towards his shoulder and you're going to step, take that outside leg and rein off. And what I'm looking for is I want him to go forward and also outward at the same time. But it's motion over maneuver. So get him moving first. Bent second, so he needs to be bent to the inside. Grab a little bit more inside rein. There we go. Now step off. There we go. Nice. And just keep driving with that inside leg. And point your outside hand out to the left. And what? There we go. You see that immediate adjustment? Inside rein touches his neck. Outside rein does not touch his neck. So sometimes, especially with a long neck horse like this, you really got to drive that outside hand out there because you think, what? Well, it's not touching here. Yeah, but it's wrapped around his neck there. And the idea is that he feels the door opening. So a lot of times we think our legs off, it's not. We think our reins off, it's not. We want to actively touch him on the inside, actively open the outside. And now we have that horse really stepping off. Very nice. Switch directions, reverse. Same thing, get him going forward and bent to the inside first before you even try. There you go, keep bumping him to the inside. There we go, now switch. Put the outside rein and leg off, step off into your right stirrup. There we go, there you go, bump, 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 drive forward. There we go. Nice, nice, good movement there. All right guys, so a lot of times we think, well he's kinda, he's kinda duller, we need to drive him forward two legs, no. Activate whatever leg you're trying to push. Get that horse where he really believes, if I'm touching you with one leg, buddy, you better be going in the direction I'm sending you. If I'm touching you with two legs, keep tracking forward. We'll get with a lazy horse like this and we'll be trying to move their shoulders over, but we'll be actively pushing with both legs. Well, that means the door's not open. Just because you open the rein up, if you open the rein up but you leave the leg on, your legs and your reins need to move together. Hey, you need to be able to say, open door, close door, open door, close door, and it really doesn't matter that's going to hold true whether you're going around a circle that they track in between your hands and legs and the horse is bent or you're tracking in a straight line it's going to be the same idea so if i want to make a 30 foot circle around that pole i'm going to get the bend that i need and drive him around that pole as i'm looking at it and there's going to be actively when i say actively like i'm intentionally putting two reins on his neck holding my hands close enough together that he feels the reins on his neck and actively leaving my legs where i can feel him i can feel his ribs on my calves that way th there's no confusion and then when I want to make adjustments now, since I'm, again, laws of attraction, since I'm actively thinking about this, well, then it's obvious when I do this. That's obvious. But a lot of times we're not thinking about this, and sometimes the reins are touching the neck, and sometimes they're not, and sometimes we're holding the reins up here, and sometimes we're not. And all that lack of consistency builds in a lack of consistency of our horse. So if we're actively riding, trying to ride the exact same way every single day, every single day, well, then the horse knows. 
immediately on that last filly that we made the adjustment, the horse made the adjustment immediately. So we're going to do the same thing with him. I want you to get around this, the closest pole to us, and circle us. And think about this. We call it riding the eye. Our inside rein is going to be tighter than our outside rein. Okay? So when you're going around the circle, we can start to the right. I want your elbow extended, and I want him... There we go, right there. He doesn't have to be too bent, but I want you to be able to see the corner of his eye. Okay. When you lose sight of his eye, he's too straight. I want him to be a little off center, and I want you to be able to do the whole pattern and him never get his eye back. So that means on the straight line, when we're going straight and far, there's gonna be a little, you're gonna be pushing him out a little bit. As he gets more advanced, he'll be able to go straight and keep his head off center. But we're gonna show him how to walk, trot, canter, and never have his face. So you're always, the ball is always in your court. It's not only great for horses like him that are good horses that you trust, but it's great for horses that you don't trust. This is how you build your confidence in that horse. He's, he has a real hard time bucking if his head's off center and it's easier for you to grab him than him take his face from you. And you do that by, we're riding around here, our eyes are up ahead of them, and we have one arm extended on the reins. And we're almost at contact. That means they can almost feel our hand. What this does is two things. As long as their head's off center, they feel free to go forward. They're not capped or shut down in any way. We talked about explosions a lot yesterday. People use the word explosion. Explosion comes from capping it. The balloon explodes because there's nowhere for the energy to go. The pipe bomb explodes because black powder, if you set it off in the sand here, it just fizzles. There's, like it doesn't explode. It doesn't explode until you cap it and there's nowhere to go. So we have this horse off center. So he feels completely free as long as his head's off center and we drive the horse there. He really feels uncomfortable to do anything else because he can't take his, his face from you. And since your arm is extended, he would have to pull your whole body out of the saddle to put his head down in between his legs or to pick his nose up and run off with you. So you're already there. If he tries to run off, redirect him, disengage his hindquarters, and keep him around the pole that you want to turn. And then if he tries to crash and get too close to the, the cone, do what the exercise you just did where you take that outside leg and rein off of him. Look at the pole. Ride straight to the pole. And get that circle nice and small around that pole first where you start filling that bend. There you go. Nice. Now start trotting. So remember, he's bent the whole time, but if you're trying to go outward, make sure to pop that outside hand out where he can see it. And if you're trying to go inward, make sure you pop that inside hand off where you see it. A lot of times, especially early on when the horses are green, the way that we're taught to ride correctly is also us riding with our hands in their blind spot behind their neck. They're looking up here, they're looking here. So you popping a hand out where they can, they can put their eyes on it, it lets them know already where you're trying to send them. and already lets them know where they're going to get grabbed that there's, there's issue. There we go. Whenever you're ready, look up at that barrel and ride to the barrel. There we go, ride to the barrel. Drive, 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 drive. There we go, I love that bend. Look at the pole, ride around the pole. Nice. So what you're gonna find is the most effective way to turn is before you get to that turn, that you're already pushing out. You see a barrel racer, they run straight to that barrel, but a good barrel racer is gonna come to that barrel and that horse is already gonna be angled outward, having that shoulder out, so they can drop in around it and go to the next cone. So you don't wanna be riding straight here with the shoulders already in, because nothing good is gonna come of that. You wanna be riding to your spot, picking that shoulder up, so then you can release that inside rein and bring, bring them right around it. Very nice, very nice. All right, now you're gonna look up at me Drive straight to me, drive straight, drive straight. Drive, 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 drive. There we go. Look at the pole, turn at the pole. Now look up at the barrel, gather up a little bit more inside rain, just a hair. There we go. Drive, 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 keep looking up at the pole. Look up at the bell, I mean, sorry. Turn. Look at me. Drive here, drive, 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 drive. Eyes up, chin up. There we go. Now look at the pole. Step off with your inside stirrup and rein. Now drive to the barrel. There you go. Keep looking up, even if he acts wonky. 
Look at the pole. Circle that two times. Actively driving. That's it. Look at something too. When the horses act a little wonky, shank their head or whatever, look at the difference between the riders when they look down to see what's going on versus the ones that look up. The ones that keep their eyes up and keep ahead of the horse, the horse gets through their little resistance and gets there because it's easier. The horses that we look down to see what's going on, they start shutting down their forward. They start acting up even more. There you go. Keep your eyes up. Don't look at him. If he's not in between your legs, you'll know it, I promise. There we go. Eyes up, drive them towards the barrel, and then circle the middle one. Drive, 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 drive. Drive, 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 drive. Look at the middle one. Cut to the inside. There you go. That's it. Look up at the barrel again. Drive to it. There you go. Drive, drive, drive. Look at the pole. Give up a little bit of your outside rain. Gather a little bit of your inside rain. There we go. Nice. I love that. Look at him dropping his head. Now look up. Let's go straight. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. Drive, 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 drive. Look at the pole. There we go. Drive him more. Put your legs on him more. Ask him for more. The harder he works, the less he can pay attention to everything else. Look up at the barrel again. Good job. Drive, drive, drive. Ask for more. Look at the pole. Look up. Drive, drive. There you go. Look at the pole. There we go. Kiss, 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 kiss. Whenever you're ready, take your legs off and say ho. Couple things. Whenever he would shake his head or do something wonky or kind of kick up and you would look down at him, that takes away the drive forward and makes him act more, do more of that. Because you went from actively driving him to actively not driving him anymore. So he says, oh, the more I shake my head, the more I kick out, the more wonkiness I do, the harder, the, the easier it is on me because you release that pressure. The more you keep your head up, he shakes his head, but your eyes are still here. He's like, well, damn, I shouldn't shake my head. That was wasted effort that I just gave. Oh, I shouldn't kick out her buck because that was wasted effort. She didn't even check up. She doesn't even care. She's a maniac. Okay? The next thing is now that you have him where he's thinking, oh, I really got to think because I don't know where she's going to turn. Now you can start driving him more and get him more engaged to what you're doing. The more he's engaged in what you're doing, the less he looks at the flag, the less he looks at the cow, because you're starting to push for more and more, and you start cantering him, and you start asking, you start kissing, and you start cropping on a horse that maybe you wouldn't because you're worried about what they're going to do, right? So it, it turns the tables from a horse that you're worried about what he's going to do if you push him to now you've turned the tables and you think, man, I can ask for more. I can push for more. I can go faster, and you're no longer relying on the brakes to work. So he can have a complete brake meltdown malfunction and you're still in control so you need no brakes the problem with brakes and speed and brakes and getting that horse to go fast is a lot of times we're riding the brakes and one of two things are going to happen we keep jamming up on the brakes while we're pressing the gas and the motor's going to pop and, and there's going to be an explosion or the brakes are going to go out and if you don't have this ideology in mind of just redirecting that horse and letting them go and the brakes go out, you're gonna end up in the fence. You're gonna end up crashing because the horse is gonna run away. Versus you have that hand off center, you're comfortable guiding that horse around, well, fine. If his brakes go out, ride his ass until the gas tank runs dry. It's not gonna take long. A horse that can run around here all day long, if we were like free lunging him or, or we're running around here actively trying to make him tired, horse can go all day, you get an Arabian, you get a Paso, a Saddle, all day, until they hurt themselves, they'll do it. That same horse, if you make that horse carry the bend and you let him fall in just to pick his shoulder up, you circle this three times, you circle the next one two times, you circle this, but they have to carry themselves to the inside. That same horse, will, they'll last for five minutes, seven, and then they'll be gassed because they have to use themselves mentally so much. If they can mentally check out and run, 
they can go all day. But if they have to stay with you mentally and they never know when you're going to pick them up or when you're going to drop them in or when you're going to go straight or when you're going to circle or when you're making a little bitty circle or when you're making a big circle and they have to think that much to stand between your hands and legs, I haven't met the horse yet that can do that and stay hot. Now, granted, I've met horses that can't do that because you don't have the control of them and they can stay hot, but the horse that you've broken down the resistance enough that you can guide them around like this, picking up their shoulders, moving their butt, picking up their shoulders, moving their butt. I've seen hot, hot, hot horses that people have tried everything. Just take them on a trail and run them on the trail until they physically can't run anymore. And that didn't work. You'll take them around here for five minutes straight where you're driving them and they'll say, you know what? I'm cool. Uh, I'll stop when you want me to. I'll go when you want me to. And look at the difference here. Now he's standing still, eyes aren't up all over the place, isn't looking around. We'll give him a little breather here, and then you're gonna do the same thing to the other side, and you could drive him for even more speed because what's he gonna do? Yeah. You know, if he gives you an issue, circle him. Mm -hmm. uh, if you feel like you are spurring too much and not getting what you want, we can give you a crop, and that'll go on your inside hand. If he crops and he kicks up or does anything you don't like, you'll just redirect him and send him another, another direction. Gotcha. So that's where, where the crop comes in. Yeah. For me, spurs are for direction and collection, period. I don't use spurs to drive the horse forward. Now don't get me wrong, while I'm a finished horse, I'm like, hey, pay attention. Then yeah, I might kick a horse. But it's never my intention to put spurs on because the horse needs to go forward. It doesn't make sense. You're gonna squeeze the middle to, to make it go forward? No, you get that crop, you grab their face and move their butt, and now they're thinking, oh, Anytime, anytime he moves those reins, I, I better move my feet and get there. Well, now you've actively driven that horse forward, but the fire's behind him. It makes sense to go forward versus the discomfort being in the middle, picking that middle up. We're literally, for collection, trying to pick their belly up, trying to pick their back up. If your horse is not going forward, you are not trying to pick their back up. You know who doesn't go forward and picks their back up? Bronx, bucking horses. <laughs> you are building a buck by spurring on the center on a horse that doesn't want to go forward. Gather up. You see how you have that bend in your inside elbow? I don't want any bend because I want your arm extended. That's going to make it. Do you know how much more consistent that's going to make you? And then on the outside hand, double up the reins so you have. There we go. So what that's going to do for you is now, if you need more or less, your left hand's here and extended. Your right arm's bent. Well, now you can actively touch his neck or if you need to to take that outside rein off his neck and you need to draw his head more towards his shoulder without even moving this, just pull outward. And that rein just draws through your hand and driving that horse's face towards the shoulder. Nice. And whether you're pushing inward, you're stepping inward or you're pushing outward, your eyes stay on that pole. I can't explain to you how much consistency like that, that level of consistency is going to help your riding game. Because the horse always knows, after one time of doing this exercise, the horse always knows where you're trying to go. Yeah, and the hand's always here. It's, it's like his, his North Star. Even if you're not actively using it, he knows, hey, I better keep my nose to the inside because she, she can grab me. There we go. There we go. Drive, drive, drive. Look at the pole. That's it. Ride right through it. That's it. If he's heavy on your inside of hand, open and close your inside hand. So now that's the other thing. Since you have, you're that close, you're that close to contact, you're that close to contact, when you feel that hand start filling up, when you feel it start getting heavy in his hand, without looking down, you can just start opening and closing your hand until he softens in your hand again. So you have no reason to look at him. Look at everything about her aura, about where she's looking, how, whatever word you want to use, she's ahead of that horse. So that horse feels ridiculous trying to do something stupid, so he's trying to figure out ways to get out of it. That's it, look up, look up. Drive him forward again. There you go. All right. Look down here. Right here, right here. Drive, drive, drive. Get out of his way. There we go. Look at the pole. There we go. So if that horse is getting lazy, go straighter and farther and faster where he can cover some ground. And then if he gets hot to trot or fast, then you use the circle against him. This is gonna go on the same hand as that extended arm. And now whenever you need to drive him, you can go crop yourself leg and it's gonna bend right here and touch him on the flank. But 
if he is being lazy, driving him around in circles is just making it harder for him. So stretch out. Well, now you've got a horse that he says, damn, if I go straight and I go fast, it's a lot easier. If I'm giving a hard time, that circle's harder. Okay. So he starts wanting to cover some ground. Okay. There you go. Circle him there, touch him on the butt. There you go. That's it. Look up. Look straight. There we go. Nice. Look up. There you go. That's it. Look at the pole. Step off. Take your inside leg off of him. There we go. Put your inside leg back on him. Hold him up. Hold him up. Hold him up. Let him drop. Take your inside leg off. Step on your inside stirrup. That's it. That's it. Now we're doing something. Hold him up. Hold him up. Hold him up. Step on your inside stirrup. Pop him on the butt. There we go. Make sure you're taking your inside leg off of him. Open and close that hand. Open and close that hand. Open and close that hand. Nice and stop. Good, good. All right, so first off, good job. Next thing, we got to make sure whenever we're opening this hand that our leg opens up with it. So sometimes going through it, and I realize a uh, pint-sized person, big old horse, that, that's kind of hard. But we need to actively make an effort to open and step. Our weight steps to the inside, our legs opens up off the horse, so that horse feels the freedom. Sometimes his head was coming here, and he was floating outward, but we were still holding him in the body. So he felt free to open his head up, turn his head that way, but he didn't feel free to turn. So we're going to get to the place. He's about to that place where, where we're about to ride the try out of him. But you'll get to the place doing this exercise where you're actively either holding them up, holding that shoulder up, or releasing them inward. And then I'll go from trying to make a uniform circle the first time or two that I do this to I'll, I'll actively try to hold them way off the pole and then drop them right by the pole like we're pole bending or, or barrel racing just for the other side to hold them back up again. So now that horse gets so sensitive to what leg is coming off of him that if that horse is moving forward and jumping or if that horse is moving forward forward and reining uh, or roping, that horse is going to be very active to wherever you're looking, wherever your eyes go, that horse is going to want to get there. So it starts by just trying to make nice circles and a nice oval like you're doing here and getting that horse's feet freed up. But as you get more and more forward out of him, then we're going to start actively picking him up or dropping him in. The more he's waiting for you to do those things, so if he gets real quick to to fall in on, on his shoulder whenever you make that turn, you'll hold him up for another 10, 15 feet until he's not trying, and then you'll say, okay, come on, and you'll drop him inward. Um, if he's holding the circle real big, you'll start driving him inward to a nice small circle, basically doing the opposite of whatever he wants to do. Right. So we, I got the question yesterday, is it bad if a horse anticipates? It's not bad, but we don't want them to anticipate so bad that they can't listen. So exercises like this, where there's so much you're able to adjust so much, all while keeping it patterned on one side, that that horse has to stay with you mentally. He has to, he has to be checked in with you. He has to be like an obedience dog, because at any moment, we could change what we're doing. So at any given time, we could pick him up, we could send him in, we could small circle, big circle, we could catch gears and go real fast, or we could put him in a small circle and slow him down. That's how, the more you ask of him, the more he has to pay attention. And that's where you're really gonna get, where it doesn't take 20 minutes, he's gonna, yes ma'am. Good job. Any questions? Yep. Make sense? Yep. Does the weirdness of riding like this make yep. sense though? Yep. Because it gives him where he can move freely and keep his nose your way at the same time so the ball's in your court. Right. So now you're not worried, man, if I spurn too much, he's gonna buck or he's gonna kick out. Now you can crack on him because what's he gonna do? Right. He's, he's already off center. Good job. Can we give her a round of applause? <laughs>